Hello everyone, this is Jackie. In this movie, let's watch an American crime film, All the Money in the World, this film is adapted from the kidnapping case of the world's richest man's grandson in the 70s. Late at night on July 10, 1973, a long-haired boy was kidnapped while wandering the streets of Rome. It turned out that this teenager from the US had a great background. He was the grandson of Paul Getty, the world's richest man at the time, Getty III. A kidnapper with a scarred face afterward, called Getty's mother, Gail, for a ransom of $17 million. Gail was flustered when she learned that her son was kidnapped, but she had no money. Gail chose to divorce since Jr. Getty's father became addicted to drugs. To get custody of the children, she had to give a high amount of divorce and alimony. Gail, who can't afford to pay, can only ask for help from his former father-in-law, Old Getty, 17 million was not a small number, but for Paul Getty who had a fortune of 1 billion, it was a drop in the bucket. Hearing the news that his grandson was kidnapped, he still watched stock market trends calmly as if it was just a cat lost in the yard. Then he bluntly told the media that he would not pay the ransom. Because he had 14 grandchildren. If he paid the ransom, then other grandchildren would also be kidnapped. He said that, there's very little in life worth paying full price for. Some reporters asked Paul Getty if 17 million was too much, then how much was he willing to pay for his grandson? Paul Getty replied, nothing, which shocked the world. Paul Getty was recognized as the richest man in the world at the time, but his stingy style was also well known. He built a splendid mansion in England. To prevent guests and servants from rubbing his free phone, he specially installed a coin phone in the mansion. Want a call? OK, insert the coin. As for the grandson being kidnapped, although Paul was indifferent on the surface, he still recalled his subordinate Fletcher in private to deal with the matter. Fletcher was a former CIA operative and a master of deal negotiation. Paul hoped that Fletcher went to Rome to find his grandson with as little money as possible. Gail was unwilling to pay the ransom. Her investigators made her very dissatisfied, but she was helpless. Rome police intervened and found that many emails from all over the world claimed to be extortion letters. With the temptation of 17 million, many criminals also wanted to get a piece of the pie. The police arranged for people to live in Gail's house to pay attention to the kidnappers. When the kidnapper saw that the Getty family was silent, he asked the son to write to his mother, if she didn't pay any more, he'd send a finger of her son back. This day Fletcher learned from a group of local gangsters in Rome that the grandson always wanted to act in a kidnapping scene to cheat money from grandpa. Then he talked to Paul Getty. From the current situation, it seemed that he may have found someone else. Fletcher also believed that this was a kidnapping case designed by the grandson himself. He reported the situation to Paul Getty. Paul Getty was not surprised by the result. He knew deeply that when he became rich, he had to face the issue of freedom. There were as many choices as he wanted. It was like an abyss that can ruin people, marriages, and children. This was the reason why Paul Getty was so weak. Even his blood relatives wanted to cheat his money, let alone the outsiders. So he put all his efforts into the artwork. Because they were exactly the same, never changed, never disappointed him. This kind of pure beauty was invisible to people. Fletcher thought that at this time the grandson was probably lying on a beach. He'd go home and learn the lesson when he got bored and ran out of money. Paul Getty asked him to return to Rome and waited for his grandson to go home. A group of kidnappers waited for months without seeing the ransom. Some people started to become restless. On this day, the Roman police suddenly notified Gail to recognize a dead body. They found a charred body in a suspected vehicle that was dumped into the sea. Gail tremblingly opened the cloth and cried with joy after recognizing that the body was not her son. She was glad that her son was still alive. The police investigated the identity of the body and learned that it was a member of a criminal gang. Maybe the body was killed in the gang. There was a person in this gang called Scarface. Then the police raided the kidnapper's departure point on the mountain. The kidnappers were caught, but they did not find Scarface and the grandson. From the kidnappers, they said they could not wait for the ransom, so they sold the child to the largest local mafia. After Scarface brought the boy to the mafia, the mafia leader asked him to stay and take care of Getty. Fletcher found Paul, hoping he would pay the ransom. Because it was now confirmed that the kidnapping case was not a scam by Getty, their only code is profit and loss. They will do things to Paul that cannot be undone for any amount of money. Paul said that every sum of his money was planned and there was no spare money to hand over to the kidnappers. Scarface called again here to urge Gail to pay the ransom quickly. Fletcher said they were willing to pay 200,000 US dollars. This amount can make Scarface get away safely. In addition, the son was a teenager. His grandpa had already denied him. So he was worthless. Gail was very angry at Fletcher's behavior after the phone was hung up. If you anger the kidnappers, you will kill Getty. Fletcher explained that it was a negotiation skill and they had to show a dispensable attitude. In fact, Paul Getty didn't want to pay a penny. 
he had to find a way to coordinate between 17 million and zero to an acceptable price. At night the kidnappers called and dropped the ransom to $7 million. Just when his grandson's life was hanging by a thread waiting for the ransom, Paul Getty bought a piece of art backhand for $1.5 million. In his eyes, perhaps only artworks were worthy of money exchange. The junior, Getty was locked in a remote house. He took advantage of the guards singing and dancing, then ignited the wheat field outside the window with stolen matches, and tried to smash open the door to escape. Scarface walked outside after hearing the noise. It turned out that Scarface saw that the Getty family was very rich. But they didn't care about the life and death of their children to save money, so he had a hidden heart towards the poor little Getty. He yelled for the fire after seeing Junior Getty running away. Junior Getty was taken home by a policeman on the highway. He thought he was finally saved. Unexpectedly, the police and the mafia were in the same group. Soon he was taken back. Here Gale saw a collectible show on TV and suddenly remembered. Many years ago, Paul gave him an antique minotaur worth $1.2 million. Gail grabbed the straw and prepared to sell this antique to raise money. When she found a collector to appraise it, she knew it was just a $15 souvenir. Gail, who learned the truth, slumped on the steps of the museum and fell into despair. Getty's escape annoyed the mafia boss. He asked the doctor to cut off one of Getty's ears and mailed it to the newspaper. After receiving the ear, the newspaper immediately notified the police to come and collect evidence. Then the newspaper hoped to buy the press rights for the photos of Getty's ears for $50,000. Gail didn't ask for money but only a thousand newspapers. Then she took those newspapers with photos of Getty's ears, all sent to Paul Getty. Maybe it was the bloody scene that awakened the old man's humanity. He finally agreed to pay the ransom. But he was only willing to lend $1 million because this amount allowed him to be tax-free. This richest man was not an ordinary man. In exchange for this loan, Gail needed to hand over the custody of all children. Gail signed the consent form to save her son as soon as possible. At this time the mafia had reduced the ransom to 4 million US dollars. But Gail still can't get the remaining 3 million. Scarface called and asked her to find a way. Because he didn't want to see little Getty die. Gail had to plead with Paul again, but he didn't want to see her at all. Being forced, Gail decided to implement a risky plan. She announced to the media that she was ready to pay a ransom of 4 million, then look for a chance to save Getty when she gave the money. By the time the kidnapper found out, Getty had either been rescued or ended in tragedy. Thinking carefully, Fletcher also agreed to this plan. Paul immediately called Fletcher to ask about the situation after seeing the news, he thought Gail suddenly announced that she had money and she must be asterisk C king with somebody. Fletcher was angry at Paul's approach to money without regard for the safety of his grandson. He scolded Paul, you could have all the money in the world, and you are still a no good miserable son of a bitch. The two broke completely. Maybe this awoke Paul. He then remitted all the ransom. There was also a telegram said, the money and the children are hers. Gail and Fletcher took the ransom and passed them according to the kidnapper's request. Then they waited for a message at the phone booth of a gas station. The mafia got the ransom and counted. They asked Getty to wait at the construction site. Scarface quietly told him to run quickly. Here Gail received a call and asked her to pick up someone at a construction site. When the mafia divided the money and was about to leave, they found police everywhere. The mafia leader sent his subordinates to find Getty to kill him. When Gail and Fletcher came to the construction site, Getty Jr. had already escaped. Little Getty ran to the town and the kidnappers chased him. He asked the people in the town for help, but they refused to take him in for fear of being implicated. At this time, the police also rushed to the town to control some of the mafias. Gail and Fletcher also came here to look for Little Getty. Little Getty was about to be caught by the mafia when Scarface shot them and saved him. The poor child was finally rescued and returned to his mother. At the same time, there was no one by Paul Getty who was sick in the villa. He was holding a high-priced artwork and died in solitude. Surprisingly, Paul made Gail's child the heir and stated that Gale will be responsible for all matters before the children reach adulthood. In the end, Gale displayed all of Getty's huge art collection in the Getty Museum. She also donated a lot of his property to charity. The end. The film is adapted from a real story, and it shows humanity's greedy dreams and indifference. The barriers to family relationships are beyond our imagination. People admire money, but few people have come into contact with huge amounts of money. This may be the reason why we don't understand the rich world. Well, this movie ends. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.